period of time and received a session by us, you've probably noticed that 90% of our contacts are literally from the bottom of your spine, like right here, all the way up to the top of your head. And majority, majority of them are focused down the center line. So Dr. Matt and I today are going to be talking about why we make contacts there, why there's such potent and powerful energy, and what all these neural centers are all about. So, so no, <laughs> so let's break down neural centers. So if we think about the nervous system, you know, we'll share about our brain, our spinal cord, peripheral nerves that communicate to all 100 trillion cells. And when we think about that, it's like it's a singular thing. It is our nervous system, which is very, very true. It is the most important system in the human body. But if we go one step further, which is why I like talking about these energy centers, aka neural centers, is that they're located in different parts of our spinal cord. There's actually seven neural centers. And these seven neural centers, for lack of a better term, they are mini brains. They are, I think of it almost like a highway or like a, um, a train station, a train going to different stops and it's taking from one place to another. And if there's clogged a clog at the train station, if there's too many people, if there's too much chaos, the train won't continue going and then there'll be a stoppage. Maybe they have to fix some things, right? And so these mini brains are very, very powerful. And what they are is a bunch of neurological bundle fibers or nerve fibers that are potent and, and, and plentiful in those areas. And the weird thing is, is that we learn this through chiropractic school, dissecting bodies, seeing like, oh, okay, there's more fibers, more innervations in this area. Um, but it just so happened that the technique that we learned about biogeometric integration, where this woman found the volumes and these triangles and this geometry in the body, the, the, the lines that cross together, they happen to line up on the nervous system there. Uh, and then you go to Eastern cultures, the chakras that many people have heard before, which for me, that word never really resonated with me because I didn't understand it. They just happen to line up in the exact same areas as well. There but might be something there. <laughs> there might be something there. So at the end of the day, when, these, when there's coherence and connection within each and every one of these centers, our entirety of our nervous system is more connected, the flow of energy is more connected, and we're living healthier, happier, and more whole. Yes, so let's break these down because I think Matt just covered, these are essentially just glands, and there are seven of them, and they move energy up our body, nerve flow, blood flow. What we learned in chiropractic school, it's essentially called cerebral spinal fluid. It's nerve flow that goes through the body, but the way it works is it starts in this first lower center. And it's like kind of like a squeeze. I think about if Matt said this is the train station, well, we have three diaphragms or three like balloons in our body that squeeze this pump. <laughs> so I think about this first center, and this is meant to bring energy up to the second one, to the third, to the fourth, fifth, sixth, and up to the top of the head, and then down the front. And when we have a coherent channel flow of energy like that, we can say we're regulated, we can say we're grounded, we can say whatever we want to say, but our energy field, actually what it starts doing is it starts to go into coherence. And what that means is balance. And when that starts happening, not only is this chain or the circuit complete, we can start exuding energy outside of us as well. And that's whenever I think people start like getting gas in the tank with our process. They're like, I have some, I have some gas in the tank, like energy in my system now where not only am I going through my day-to-day -day activities, but I feel like I got more to go. Yeah. And I'm like, because your system is fully online now. Yeah. We're, we're, this video uh, isn't going to go through each and every one of those seven sections and explaining the emotions correlated to it, um, what exactly it innervates, uh, how to move through it, because that would be a much longer conversation. So what we're actually doing is by the time this comes out in a few weeks from now, uh, October 7th at 6.15, we're going to be doing a probably a 75-minute class on these neural centers and on these energy centers and how to get the most out of this awareness because I think it is that. It's like when we think about pain in our body, we think about emotions that we're experiencing, whether it's anger, whether it's frustration, anxiety, uh, maybe it's a lack of acceptance of self, maybe our ego is running the show and we become slightly aware of it. It can kind of sometimes be overwhelming, but when we can learn a little bit more about how all these emotions based off, you know, years of research and science correlating some of these, you know, um, symptoms and subjective experiences to different areas of the body that were holding less light photons, less energy in the body, you can start to really like, oh, because I, you know, I experience a lot of anger. Anger is associated with the liver. Well, that liver is associated with this solar plexus right here. So maybe I can start giving a little bit more attention and energy there. And maybe that's not the answer. But what I have 
found in my experience is just that simple like cueing in just a little bit deeper, not to the, just the whole body in general, but these micro areas, obviously you don't want to like get caught up in like yeah. this one thing right here because that's not looking at it from a holistic standpoint, but it just gives you a, an opportunity to go a little bit deeper. And you were talking about these first three areas down here, a middle area in your heart and your upper areas. The lower areas, those are our primal areas. These are the areas that connect us to our physicality in this time space, right? So we have our inferior mesenteric plexus, our superior mesenteric plexus, and our solar plexus. So affecting digestive system, affecting our adrenals, our kidneys, our GI system. Um, this very first area down here, you're talking about, like, that's the base, right? That's the foundation in, in, in uh, chakras. They call it the root chakra, right? You are literally created inside of your mother's belly and your nervous system grows this way, right? <laughs> this root chakra and your suboccipital area, your occipital area, those are the first structures to be formed. So when there's imbalance in either one of those areas, the rest of the system cannot communicate correctly. And I think by just being a little bit more aware of that, we start to shift some things as well. And I, I really like, I'm going to go back to what you said earlier about yeah. the seven mini brains, because it's just that, like, if I think people think you know, when you said the solar plexus or adrenal glands, there is a certain vibration. There's a certain energy that's associated with this area that's also associated with your kidneys, also associated with your liver and digestive organs, and also like self-worth. So I think whenever we, when you're saying that to focus on these areas, it's almost just matching the tone or the vibration that's already existing there. And these are seven mini brains. So when one starts to turn on, they all kind of start to turn on. Um, and what I wanted to say too, like these lower centers, I think that when people come in here, we just had a woman come in here um, today. We've been seeing her for like two, maybe three years mm -hmm. and someone adjusted her today and it was like a completely different tone in her lower first mm -hmm. center. And she just started bringing in all of her boys, mm -hmm. all of her little boys. And I think it's so interesting because our body responds so accordingly. It's It makes sense to me that her lower root foundational survival needs her foundation, right her foundation mm -hmm. would start shifting the second that her boys and the rest of her family, the rest of her household really started coming in. Where I think about these energy centers and I'm not saying she was holding tension there before, but maybe she was. Mm -hmm. And it's like if this is not pumping so well into this one or this one, our body's super smart mm -hmm. and super efficient. And it's going to find ways not to make this smooth, easy, efficient line up the body like that. It will start if we hold tension maybe in that second center. Um, maybe something, who knows what happened to us. Maybe it was an abusive situation or something that really was survival-based. This route might be completely open, flowing a lot of potential energy, but this isn't. So our body will start doing this. Like You'll see people, they'll hold in a lot of tension right here, but the energy centers will have to start doing something else to get to the solar plexus, to get to this heart plexus. And by the time we get to the top of our head, we're drained, <laughs> we're yeah. overwhelmed, we're depleted. So I think about that mom in particular, I'm like, now that this root, the powerhouse of our body is turned on for her, I can't wait to see what kind of mom she's going to be. And that's the cool thing. You can you can have these things naturally start processing, integrating without that awareness. But I remember for me, I was having low back pain years ago and someone shared with me or I learned somewhere like that's that feeling of that foundation. Um, so are things rocky at home or rocky relationships, but also that feeling of support as well. And so my awareness of like, oh, when I don't feel supported, it manifests this way. Now it's not anyone else's responsibility to create that change within me, but it was that little bit more awareness that allowed me to just start focusing on it in a different way, which I believed collapse that wave, collapse that new possibility for cells to regenerate in a different way. And I've shared this story many times, like I'm a decade removed from the massive pain that I would have on an almost daily daily you know, level that it was just debilitating. And now that I've been able to move through those things, yes, do I have stuff come up? Absolutely. But I know I'm more attuned to it that I'll start breathing into that first and second energy center because I know how important it is to bring attention to it. So we're going to talk about some tips in a little bit. Um, but let's real quick talk about the upper centers and then I'll, I'll touch on the heart. So you, you touch on the upper centers. Yeah. So. Um, well, do you want to go first with the bottom? And maybe I'll just even say the, the bottom and the, we're talking about like the first three centers, mm -hmm. then there's this heart space, and then there's these three upper centers. And we just kind of mentioned the bottom three are a lot of like survival mm -hmm. um, foundation. And then the upper three, the heart space is kind of a category of its own. A little bridge yeah, between, yeah. A category yeah. of its own is what I like to think, a diaphragm almost of its own too. But the upper three centers then are more 
I think that when people have a lot of tension in these places, it's more like anxiety or thoughts or I'll just say Joe Dispenza says this too. A lot of our lower centers are more the finite things like mm -hmm. our, our relationships are, where are we going to get our money? Where are we going to get our food? Those three lower centers, our upper centers are more the infinite. So when people are in these states of like stress, anxiety, depression, it could be because they're overly thinking. Mm -hmm. Or if they're in these sluggish moments, it could be because there's no energy. But I want you to break down the first three. Well, no, I did. I mean, I earlier did with the lower center, superior mesenteric plexus, inferior, and then that solar plexus mm -hmm. as well. These are areas connected to all the GI and the kidneys and adrenals. And again, it's like that physicality thing. And I think you, what you just said is, is perfect. The equal and opposite of that, it's not so much physical. It's energetic, it's spiritual, uh, it's etherical, but it's also like we can't live too much in the physical yeah. and we can't live too much in, in, in our heads and to the energy and the vibration because we got to live in this world, which I'll get to in a second what that bridge is, but like our throat, this thyroid plexus right here, this is our, our, our voice box. This is how we communicate to the world. So if we've had... Uh, times in our life that we feel like we couldn't communicate, we couldn't share our truth, this will close off and we don't feel like we can express ourselves. So this is not only an area to breathe into and pay attention to, but it's maybe humming and you know doing ohms right there that opens up that area, uh, our pineal and our pituitary plexus, you know, the pineal gland, one of the most powerful glands in the body, um, off subject, but I remember seeing this whole um, research study with Tibetan mucks that they could actually put a cold towel, a freezing towel on them and cause perspiration in their body or heat to rise so much in their body that it would actually dampen the towel and make it dry. And like, like that's superhuman. What they saw though, when they were getting into that state, the pineal gland that was on imaging would light up like a freaking Christmas tree Whatever they were connected to, some light, some energy, some vibration was coming through them, and this was getting activated so much that it changed their entire physiology that took a wet towel and turned it dry and heated it up. I gotta say something. Yeah. I'm not a monk, and I did not do this with a towel. But I am <laughs> okay. <very similar. laughs> I have a very similar story. Okay. <laughs> um, I, this is so crazy you bring that up. Like, I think two, maybe three years ago, I was playing volleyball in like an adult rec league, and I remember thinking... I was just learning a lot about um, breathing in these centers at that point and how bringing energy from these lower centers up to the top into your pineal gland, how much energy that does for your body. And I was, um, the other team was like serving, so I was going to receive the serve. And the first one comes, I like shank it, and I start having all these negative self-talks. Like I went back to high school playing volleyball, like I'm not going to get this one, like it was terrible. Like I, it took me back and I just, I just sat there for a second and I started breathing and pulling the energy back up to the top center. And all of a sudden, I thought, it doesn't really matter. And I played like I've never played before. So every time I started receiving serves, I would just like be like, and like most of our team was already clients under care anyways. Yeah. Eric's being weird again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I just kind of like brought my energy back up there and it totally cleared me. Like I was like, I don't feel those low level thoughts anymore, which brings me to my point that I was going to say about that at the beginning, but they're all frequency and the mm. higher frequencies are up in these first centers. So it's not about ignoring these like lower centers of being grounded and supported. I think that's the whole integration process, but to integrate that groundedness with this high level thinking and you, inspiration. You, you were like Neo from the Matrix. You downloaded, I know Kung Fu now. And you became this volleyball Olympian, right? <laughs> you just connected to something so big. And then like, okay, so we have the lower, the the physicality, the connected to our body and this physical reality. And then we have this upper spiritual side. And again, life is about balance. It's not about focusing just on one or just on the other. And sometimes maybe we focus more on, uh, on one side of the spectrum, um, just depending on what life is throwing to us. But the center, this fourth neurological center, this fourth energy center, our heart center, this right here where our thymus gland is located behind. Again, all of these energy centers also have a gland associated with it. So it's a bunch of neurological fibers and these important glands in our body that control the biochemistry in our body. Um, this is the bridge between our spiritual self, our energetic self, and our physical self. It's the bridge between our higher self and our lower self. And our middle, our center, is one of the most important things that we can focus on. So if you're someone like, this is a little overwhelming, it's a little complex, Focus on 
heart breathing and creating heart coherence because our heart is 15 times more powerful from a frequency standpoint. The waves and the vibrations that come from our heart, 15 times more powerful than our head and our brain is. So when we can create this calmness, this stillness, and focus on breathing in this area, it's almost like whatever's happening here and whatever's happening here, again, we don't have to figure it out exactly. We just find some balance. And it's almost like there's a cup, there's an orchestra going on in your body, and you could try to go to each and every single person's one to try and fix their strings, or we can go to the composer and be like, hey, this is what we need, and then he can help to equal, create equilibrium throughout the body, and that's essentially when you connect to your heart space, that is what's going on there. I read something about that where one diaphragm, three centers, another diaphragm, one center, another diaphragm, three centers. And this one doesn't have any locomotion and this one doesn't have any locomotion. Our heart alone pumps, it beats. Yeah. So it has its own locomotion. Mm -hmm. And then when we breathe into it, it adds more horsepower essentially. So this is like a turbo blaster. Yeah. And whenever I think about like an energy field, everybody always draws it, shows it where the heart goes out like eight feet yeah. around and then comes back down into your feet. So I think even when people are focusing on heart coherence, it's the whole body like is starting to go into coherence as well. So that's something I want to dive into it, maybe with the tips even yep. of what, what we recommend for you guys. We just gave you so much information. Yeah. And so to break down this video before the tips, you have a nervous system, perception system that takes it all in. If you break it down even more, every single one of these energy centers also has its own type of perception system of it, like that gut feeling or, you know, feeling like closed off here or closed off here, right? Certain experiences will gravitate to certain areas of your nervous system more. When we integrate, we eat a, live a healthy lifestyle, we look at our stuff, this flow of energy begins to be more efficient. But when we don't look at these things and we're not paying attention and these things build up, disruptions and incoherence start to happen. It's like someone's playing a G string, someone's playing a C string, and it's like these things are not in harmony. And so these tips are about letting that energy flow, but more importantly, creating coherent coherence and harmony within your body. So tip number one. Okay, the first tip I have is... Easy peasy. <laughs> Our sessions at Rev, I really, like this is what it was for me. Like I, this is what it's all about because I knew for me, whenever I was younger, I specifically remember always getting like strep throats, mm -hmm. strep throat or like something wrong with my throat all the time. And I remember at that point in my life, I had been going, I was in high school and I had been going through a really bad breakup and just telling everybody like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And when I started getting adjusted this way, I got the same strep throat type thing mm -hmm. happen. And instead of lasting like two months is what it felt like it used to last. It lasted like two days. It was like the worst strep throat of my life. But this process actually, I'm like, this process helps with finding the blind spots within mm -hmm. these because I knew I had done all the work of like spiritual side of why you get throat stuff, medical, mental, emotional side. Like I went down all the rabbit holes and then it was like to know that my body holds tension in places I might not even be aware of and have somebody facilitating that starts to open these up in a way that your body allows and receives that too. So um, <clears throat> I would say get adjusted first. I think uh, I think what comes up for me when you say that, it's like um, we understand fully, not, not fully, we really understand how energy moves. In the body. We're going to give some more tips on how energy moves and how different things you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been asked before, like, you know, if, if it's all based off of a vibration, frequency, tone, you can actually animate that from yourself. The space that we have is healing as well. Mm -hmm. well do, you, do you have to touch me? Like, do we even have to even come in here? And could we heal by being somewhere else? Because there are those, you know, distance healings. Mm -hmm. And my answer to that has always been, well, since I had this understanding, y yes, you could still heal without being physically touched. But when you are physically touched, it's connecting that energy to the physical as well, finding balance. But think about your knee right now. Like try to bring energy to your knee, think about your knee, and maybe you can even do this to yourself. Now I touch the knee. Different knee. <laughs> now feel your knee. Like, do you have a little bit more awareness to that? So she said something about the blind spots. What we do as facilitators is we physically touch, we feel where there's dissonance, we feel where their body is not flowing. Just like a great massage therapist or a great acupuncturist that understands what they're doing and their modalities, we bring you, help you to bring attention to those areas. And when more attention goes to that area, more change can flow and more coherence can be created. So um, outside of getting adjusted in our hands-on approach and the technique that we use, 
If you're feeling angst, you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling something, take a quick body scan and where you feel this resistance in your body, say it's in your heart, say it's in your chest, maybe feel there, bring your hands to these areas and touch yourself. You got pain in your knee? Touch your knee, allow your body and energy to flow more with that attention because you're physically touching it. And I've actually utilized this on a lot because we tend to, when we're in pain, we tend to just keep kind of rolling and not look at our stuff and sit within it. And this allows you to bring more focus and attention to those areas. I love that. Yeah. Um, perfect. And then tip number two, I think as you might be touching these centers too, you can start to add breath to these. Definitely. And I think breath is a game changer because breath not only shifts your nervous system, but it actually, you could, with your breath, you can move energy, you can move blood flow, oxygen, where oxygen moves, all the rest of that moves. So whenever I think about breathing, I'm like, I always like to breathe up because like we said, to bring these centers here and then to bring that energy back out in time. Yeah. but that's just kind of like a general rule of thumb for breathing but if maybe you want to touch on that the only thing i want to add to that is that's like just like anything like you know you're supposed to breathe you know you're supposed like if you're stressed out you got stuff like breathing is good for you but we tend to just live in this world where we're not focusing on our breath and we have these fast breaths but the slow controlled long inhales and maybe slightly longer exhales you can actually start feeling you know we talk about volumes these lower area this middle area and this upper area stress tension dissonance disease it all feels like this it's contracted yeah. the volumes are contracted when we can consciously breathe we expand and then we exhale and soften and it's kind of like stretching right like at the first stretch it's kind of tight and you come up and then, oh, it's a little bit farther. I had someone stretch your hamstring. That third one's like, whoa, you can go all the way, right? Like, so just every single breath, it's an expansion of that area, an opening of that area and getting rid of some of that contraction within the system. So breathing is so important and mindful breathing, conscious breathing is even more powerful and potent. I think we we're just talking about bringing awareness to these centers and yeah. that's kind of the third one. Um, I think that a lot of people like affirmations and words i like energy and feeling so i said that i was thinking about this for people i was like for people if they want to do like different centers or different um affirmations and you can start doing that and really starting to feel a shift with that when you add breath and touch it's like a whole new ball game yeah. and for me i think it's all about bringing to elevated emotions if i'm feeling anger or rage or maybe sorrow i don't try to reach necessarily for joy or inspiration up in this next center i go for the next best feeling and it's almost like whatever i can feel pulling into the next and the next and the next and all of a sudden i'm somehow in a place of gratitude sometimes where i don't know how exactly it happens in my body but affirmations if you start doing affirmations in these centers um if you start feeling into these centers, if you start bringing awareness, but more importantly, if you can hold that energy, that emotion of gratitude, peace, joy, love, enthusiasm, we actually automatically bring our energy up to the top. So um, yeah. elevated emotions. I think everything that you said earlier about like everything is a frequency, everything is a vibration. We're in this tough place. And then going to each of these centers, and it doesn't have to be necessarily all seven, maybe it is just my lower half, maybe it is my legs, maybe it is this, maybe it is this, maybe it's this, um, maybe it's split in two, right? <laughs> maybe it's right side, left side. I don't actually think it necessarily matters all the time when it comes to this point, but again, you can go as deep as you want or be more general with it. Um, the, the, the term, the affirmation, I am, and then anything else that you put after it, it's not to say that you can say, I am a billionaire and expect to be a billionaire tomorrow, but I am whole. I am healthy. I am vibrant. I am fully alive. For over two plus years, the entire Rev family at 7.07 a.m. would write down an I am statement on a text message thread because we were all holding each other accountable. And man, it's crazy. Some of those things that we talk about and some of the things that we said I am weren't necessarily manifested and real in our life, but several weeks and months to a year later, these things started popping up. And it's like we took the the energy of that I am statement and it basked in that emotion of it yeah. and our physiology started changing that physiology change turns into an energetic change that energetic change that animates out into the world and people places things and opportunities started coming in and shifts in our health also and how we felt about ourselves started shifting as well yeah so if you haven't done any I am statements I am statements writing them down are great but feeling into 
I am happy. I am whole. Whatever it is for you that you're looking to create, start practicing that as well. And we have a really good YouTube video that mm. I created on these seven neural centers with different affirmations for each. So Mug. It's like I feel <laughs> in my heart, I speak in my throat, I believe, I see, okay. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but then to our next point, um, movement. Yeah, movement. So this is basically, I think those are the three ways that we move energy in our body the best, which is awareness, touch, um, movement, and breath. And movement for me, I really didn't understand in the beginning how moving my body, because I was moving in such a general way, was going to impact or affect any of these centers. I, I kind of always saw it as like a washing machine effect until I actually got in some pain recently. Mm -hmm. um, just happy sack and way too hard. <laughs> it happens. It happens. <laughs> like hurt something in my hip but i remember i i do this often where this first lower center like matt said communicates talks to or innervates all the muscles in my legs all the muscles in my calf all the muscles in my feet and i was having something going on in this first lower center or in my left hip and i started adding breath i started adding touch but i started adding movement and what i was doing was if my feet are communicating with this lower center i started breathing in i don't know if you could see my feet <laughs> Pointing my feet up towards my like this. <laughs> and then whenever I exhaled, pointing my feet down towards the bottom. And literally my ankle, I don't know if you're hearing that, is clicking because I'm holding so much tension in that lower center still a little bit. But it's almost like a negative feedback loop where my feet are doing something and it's affecting the center already. So breathing and I, I mean, doing specific movements if it's something in your heart space. We always say like a heart opener or a cat cow or something yeah. like that. But moving and almost like... I think about these as like fulcrum points yeah. to move whenever I'm moving and I'll just start to do any direction and kind of just intuitively feel into it and see where I'm holding tension because mm -hmm. that's really all we're looking to do in this. Yeah, I mean, yoga is, this is what it's all based off of. Like we have a lot of similar conversations and similar ways of speaking about energy movement and integration and processing that yogic traditions have been doing for thousands of years because they understand that awareness is key. They understand that breath is key and movement of the physical body. We've had people that um, have been doing this work for a while and then they start going to yoga because they feel like called to it and they do this turn, this twist and they're like, I don't know, like this should be good for me, but I did this and I am so emotional right now or it's like physically I feel like I got hit by a train and I did this yin class. It was very simple. I was like, well, because all of these energy centers are pocketing stored emotions, stored experiences. And when you move it, one, it can get the energy flowing. But if you've had something there that's been there for a while, it can sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable. So movement is just, we have to honor and respect our body, but movement is life, expansion and contraction of our cells, expansion, contraction of all these centers. It just allows that, it's like squeezing that end of the toothpaste for it to come out, right? It's gotta squeeze everything out to kind of let it flow through the body more efficiently as well. I love that. Yeah. Um, and then the last one? And the last one's a bonus one. I, I didn't know if we were going to share this or not, but it, it's it's holding and squeezing of some of these energy centers. And again, she talked about the cerebral spinal flu in the body. And I got this from Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, who if you haven't read his stuff, listened to his stuff, watched his stuff, gone through his experiences, highly recommend going through his process because he's been able to give a lot of the science and validity to what we've been doing over the last like nine years now. Do you want to say something? Before we see you guys October 7th, we are going to be with Dispenza that weekend. Oh, yeah, we are. Oh, literally yeah. right before that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's going to be at Life University. We're going to be doing our continuing education class. So we're, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, so anyways, his whole work, and I'll just briefly share this as the bonus thing. When you breathe in these areas, you create coherence. Cerebral spinal fluid is in your spinal cord and it's trying to go up and all the way down. And the more efficient that is, it opens up into your pineal gland and your plexus is up here in your brain, which then create more coherence in this field, creates more coherence in our heart, creates more coherence down here. And so something he talked about was he's breathing in these areas, paying attention to them. And then even when you reach the top of your breath, maybe holding your breath for anywhere from five to 10 to 30 seconds, he does it for a lot longer. When we do our community breath works here, we do it for a lot longer as well. Maybe 30, 45, 60 seconds, sometimes a little bit longer. But you can actually like squeeze your, you know, your lower abdominal area. In yoga, they call it mula bandha, like keeping everything really tight in there. And what that does is like that toothpaste analogy, you're squeezing the bottom. And what you're doing is you're sending that cerebral spinal fluid, which is really just charged electrons up our body and it's like getting more energy more energy more energy flowing and it almost can like act as like a, a missile if there's any blockage <laughs> like 
breaks it all up and gets it moving. So you can squeeze in this area, hold your breath, squeeze in your you know sternum and in your chest and maybe even your throat. Not for too long. You're not doing like a death grip and death hold and, and causing more chaos in your body, but it's just a slight squeeze. And what that does is just gets the energy flowing. So practice that in your breathing techniques. Maybe you do five minutes of breathing and then on your last few breaths, take a big breath in, hold your breath at the top and you squeeze and really think about sending that squeeze and that energy up to your brain and then exhale, hold that exhale out for a little bit and you can re even resist the urge to breathe in and slightly squeeze as well. That just gets that, that juice flowing for lack of a better term, right? <laughs> That's the best way I can think of it. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Awesome. Um, that was a lot of information. Like we said, we're going to go into this and more October 7th. We're going to be doing essentially a masterclass, probably 75 minutes, breaking down all of these neural centers, emotions, energies, everything that's stored there and how our process supports that. And again, you can uh, sign up for that on revoptimalliving.com slash events. Again, it's going to be October 7th. We can't wait to see you there. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you found value. Please like, please subscribe, comment below and we will see you on the next one.